G'day and welcome to another big edition of the RDFNL Netball Show. Thanks to our friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. My name is Andy. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. Thanks for joining us. What a big round of netball we just had. It was an interesting round. I think there was an upset. There was a blowout that I don't think many people were expecting. No, I certainly yeah. wasn't. <laughs> and then so there was some a couple of close matches as well. We've seen Romsey are uh, the queens of the close matches and they got a win this time. So they've had a mixed results with them, but they're thrilled to get that win against Rock Bank. I think with the, um, the result that probably wasn't too surprising was is the first game we'll look at is Rupert's Wood and Digger's Rest. Uh, Rupert's Wood winning that one by 21 goals, 50 to 29. That's probably a, a good indication of where both sides are at. Well, because I was out there watching the football, I, I wasn't covering this netball match, but I did watch the first half. And look, Rupert's Wood are flying at the moment. They've got, they're seeming to have that confidence within the side. They've got that flexibility. Like I thought Amy Starr's absolutely dominated in that first quarter in goal attack. And they actually took her off at the second quarter just to switch things around. And then she moved into defense in the second half. So well late in the second quarter, in the second half so it shows that flexibility that they've got that they can throw these players around and they've got those different combinations meanwhile for diggers it's, it's a tough run they, they've got no luck at all they, they've had a number of players out injured i know carly harrison hasn't played for a number of weeks who who is a key for them in the middle of the court and they've started to get a few players back but then they've had more injuries shelby strong didn't play on the weekend and had her arm in a sling and she's a key for them in that front or half of the court so for diggers rest there's not much luck i think they've still got a few players playing a little bit sore as well so it's sort of just says where those two teams are at at the moment. It's been a long season for them, hasn't it? It has. Look, on paper, they started the season really well. On paper, have got a really good side, but just they haven't been able to get their whole team on the court fit and firing, and that's been the biggest thing. Look, they are out of the top six at the moment, but other results are keeping them in the mix. So if they can get everyone on the court and get a couple of wins in this back half of the season, then there's still a chance to make finals. And if they've got their full side, you never know what will happen come finals time. I don't think they'd be overly disappointed with, uh, with that result there. 20 Twenty-one goals when they've, uh, they've they've got they've got a few injuries and they're against a, a superstar side like Rupert's. But I, I don't think it's too bad. Look, the first quarter Rupert's were dominated. The mm. second quarter it was more even, and I think it was sort of the first and third were both Rupert's, with the second and fourth were a little bit more diggers. So they had their moments at time, and they were forcing turnovers from Rupert's. Would I think Rupert's would at times were causing their own turnovers by playing probably a little bit too fast pace, and they were turning the ball over. But at the same time, Diggers Rest did show moments like they did probably the first two time the first time these two teams met that, that they can play good netball against the Sharks, but the Sharks have a bit more experience and that bit more depth across the court. Spot on there. The, uh, the the result that I don't think many people expected, uh, particularly the margin, it was massive and too strong for Riddle by 30 goals. There wasn't much separating the two sides uh, early in the second term when I was uh, down there having a real watch, but then uh, the, the Cats shot away, so to speak. Well, yeah, well, that's what I looked at this margin, and it shocked me. I saw these two teams play back in round one, and it was a really, really good match where Riddle pushed Macedon all the way. Where this one, a 30-goal margin, I think, shocked everyone. I spoke to Kira Stewart, the Macedon coach, after the game, and she said she was quite in shock. She thought, yeah, it'd be hard for fight to the death, but they played really, really good netball. I think they, Kira said they missed about five shots for the game. Their combinations worked. They had a few turnovers. Riddle were making turnovers, and in the end, Macedon sort of... Um, um, capitalised and we, I think we're starting to see the mass that we've been expecting all season. They sit on top of the ladder but they haven't played great netball and this is probably their first time they've, st they've started to put it all together and look they didn't even have their full side they had Ty Coppinger was missing as well so it's really really good signs from Masson and they got to play a couple of their B grade players as well um, which will come in handy if they need them as backups come finals time but I think we're starting to see the real mass them. I love the aggregate too uh, between two of these quality sides. Uh, 110 goals is a, is a pretty good showing and 70 goals there from the Cats, even better. Look, 70 goals. We've seen um, 70 goals against some of the lower sides. It's not something we're used to seeing against the side that's in the top four. Obviously, for Riddle, probably not the day they were after. I think they have got a couple of injuries there, which means they're not at full strength. But look, hopefully, we'll, I'll expect them to bounce back. Every team sort of has an off day, and they've had a really off day <laughs> against a side that was fire, absolutely firing. So no concerns for Riddle at this point, but they'll be looking to get back on the winner's list this week. Who was the best for the Bombers? For the Bombers, yeah. Sarah Clark, so she played a good winning defence. From what I, if I'm correct, it could be her first game, mm -hmm. either her first or second. So they are still putting a number of under 19 players through that side. So they are, have got one eye on the future out at the Bombers. The shock result of the weekend it was the Hawks taking down Mountain Centrals by four goals. It was, obviously, for Centrals. 
it's been one of those seasons. We think they start to get on a roll and then they sort of um, die down. But for the Hawks, this was a brilliant performance. They sort of struggled for a few weeks after losing Sarah Duff with a knee injury and not having Tara burn up. So it sort of um, upset their front court. where They had Tara back on the weekend and they dominated for the first three quarters. They were up by 11 goals at three-quarter time and looked like they were cruising to a win. Centrals did bring it back to a four-goal margin. But speaking with Wendy Roberts after the game, she said... It was a warm day and her players sort of ran out of legs. They had um, four of their players played under-19s as well. So yep. obviously, especially three of them at mid-quarters. So they did a, put a lot of running and then they had to back it up again. But they were thrilled to get that win. That's the third win for the Hawks. And they've beaten three different sides and they could quite easily make it two in a row this week coming up. Yeah, it was a fantastic performance. And I, <coughs> I would hesitate to think maybe that was their first ever win against Centrals in A-grade. I don't know. I, they haven't in my time since I've been mm. there. Obviously, look, for them, anyone beating Centrals, everyone, they've always been a scalp. They've knocked off Rock Bank as well. Yep. And they, obviously they beat Bromford. So they've had three different wins, three wins against different sides and that confidence is starting to grow. For them, they're just going to keep doing the work because they can't get complacent and just think, yep, the results are going to happen. If they can keep doing the work, then they can get closer to these top sides again and reduce the margin which they're focused on. Can the Central still make the six? Look, results, they're still six points out because results fall the way. Obviously, Rom, uh, Rock Bank is sitting in sixth, but mm. you've got Rock Bank in sixth, Diggers Rest in seventh, and Miles and Central's in eighth. All those three teams lost on the weekend, so they're, they're still there. They still mm. need results to fall their way, but they've got to get winning. Speaking of Rock Bank, they went down in a thriller to Romsey, 43-41 to by two goals. Uh, a great effort there by the Rams, I think, and uh, it shows a lot about how far they've come. Look, it is, but I think the Rams would have been taking in some confidence, hoping to win that game. You've got the teams that are fifth and sixth on the ladder, and both have shown a little bit of mixed form at times. They've both have had some really good wins, and then they've had some close losses. We've seen Romsey, I think, 99% of their games have been within 10, 10 goals, if not all of them. So we've seen them. They were up early in the first half before the Rams came back and made it, I think it was even, heading into the last quarter. So... Um, so Romsey got over the end, over the line in the end, and probably the standout for them you've got to um, is Chelsea Ross. Mm. She's obviously we saw last year in finals. She stood up when she really needed to, and she stood up in the absence of Bromwell Blair. So she's had a number of different shooting partners since then. She shot um, Chelsea shot thirty one goals on the weekend, and from what I've heard, I think Hope um, Evans may not be back this season. Yeah. So you'll have Rianne and Ezard. Ezard's probably likely to play the goal, um, the other shooting position, and so hopefully Chelsea and Rianne can sort of build up that um, goaling partnership. We've seen them win a couple, be together in a couple of games, and seem to be clicking, and they'll be a key for um, the. Red backs. Absolutely. Well, it's, uh, it's good for them to sort of mix things around at this <coughs> time of the year, and uh, a great effort there by uh, both sides as well. I think um, both sides, both both supporters would have been hanging on uh, and bated breath to see which way that would go. It is, and for the Rams, it's probably would have been but if they had have got the win, that would have given them a little more breathing room in that side, inside that top six. So a few people in the record actually tipped them to get over the line too. Yeah, look, I, I and within good reason too. And within good reason, it was it was probably the one that you'd think could have gone either way on the weekend. I did tip Romsey. I thought they've been in all their games and sort of thing, and they've shown they are a very strong side, and they do have still have quite a few premiership players in that one. But it was one of those games that the Redbacks could have quite easily won. Well, in return to form with a big win over Broadford after going down the previous week to Macedon. No surprise here. You've got, obviously, one of these thriving. They lost to Macedon, which... Every team has lost to Macedon, yep. so it's not like it was a, a necessarily a bad thing there. And you've got Broadford, who has struggled a little bit. Broadford, I think their highest total was six goals for the quarter, so mm. they were struggling to get the goals. While at the same time, Wallen scored at least 14 goals in every quarter. So Wallen did what they had to do. They got the big win and kept that percentage booster. Yeah, doing all the right things at the moment as we turn it. And, uh, of course, uh, some, some news involving Sunbury Kangaroos. Yes, obviously, they don't have an A-grade side and they don't have an under-19 side. I think it has been tough down there for the Sunbury Kangaroos, which is the B and the C grade and on the weekend their C grade side got the first win of the season the first one for the club so they won a thriller against Wallen I think it was 18-17 so I think it was pretty exciting down there for the Kangaroos because I think some of these players had never played in a win at this club so it's been a tough year, few years for them but a, a lot of happy people down there on Saturday. It's good to see some of the footballers get involved as well. Look I think there has been a couple of footballers jump in I think um, with people away and all of that they, they have lacked the numbers so the footballers have put their hand up to help out and yeah managed to get a win on the weekend Kent. Yeah, fantastic. Hopefully it's the first of a few more before the, uh, the season runs out. As we turn attention to, uh, to this weekend, of course we are talking up Split Round and 
uh, a game that we've already seen already. It's uh, Rupert's Wood and Diggers Rest. Yeah, the way the um, the fixtures sort of gone with Lansfield and Sunbury Kangaroos not having A grade sides, we get Rupert's Wood and Diggers Rest for a second straight week. So a good bit of an anomaly in the in the fixture. And look, I think for Diggers Rest, I want to reduce the margin from what they did last week, where Rupert's Wood would probably want to take it to that next level and further develop of what they did. Both of these teams know each other pretty well. It'll be the third time that they've played each other for the season. So it'll be quite interesting to see how this game pe- pans out compared to the first one. Um, and Sorry, compared to last week. Well, it is effectively half-time in that game and Rupert's would lead that contest 50-29 to 29 with eight points on the line or four points on the line, however you want to work it out. But... Uh, would, would, what would uh, what would you guys sort of learning from that game? Look, they'll take it up. They did try a few different combinations. Um, Kathy Dicker came out into goal attack. I don't think she's done that much this season. They brought up Georgia Leonard. Again, played a little bit in centre, I think, uh, definitely in the final quarter, possibly even the third. So, look, they're trying different combinations. I would be wanting to reduce that margin. I'd love to get a win over the Sharks, but I think at this stage, they're still in very different positions. Got a big blockbuster. Romsey and <coughs> Madison over Romsey Park. This could go... This, this could be the game with uh, Bromsey upstage Masson for the first time this year? Look, I think this is a match of the round, so obviously you've got I think last time these two teams played, it was still a pretty close match, and if I'm correct I think Bromsey actually led at half time, mm. and Masson right. actually came from behind to get the win, so Masson didn't play a convincing game, but they ended up getting the points if Masson and show the form they did last week, no one will get near them. Yeah. They absolutely dominated Riddle, but then we've seen Bromsey is a team that keeps sides close, so they can keep them close, and they're in the end of the game, they are a chance to get a win. They're a team that just grinds away don't they? They do, and that's what we're seeing so many close results. They've had draws, one point wins, one point losses, two goal wins, two goal losses. They, yeah, they, they're they just in every single game and you, you probably don't want to be around them come two, three minutes to go because it's quite possible they will get a win. The final game we'll have a look at because we've only got the three. Uh, we've got Wood and Heskett and Broadford. Uh, you mentioned earlier on that uh, Wood and Heskett, they've beaten three different sides this year. Well, this is their chance to uh, to get their f- second win against another team this year. It is. This is probably for the first time in a long time. Wood and Heskett is looking for two wins in a row. Mm-hmm. That has not happened for a long time. So that's massive for this side. They'll, they'll actually go into this game favourites. So it's that's a rarity too. It is a rarity. Something they're, they're not used to and something they'll have to take on their back. But they need to do the hard work that they did last week. If they get complacent, Broadford could quite easily get up. We have seen Broadford show some good signs at times this season. Look, they Obviously, when they did have Amelia Brock in round one, they pushed Wallen all the way and just fell short. But they don't have her, but they've got another a number of different other options. So it'll be quite interesting how we go here. I think Wooden Heskett will get that second straight win, and they'll just add to the confidence that's growing out there. Is Broadford a chance to break through for their first win of the year? Look, they're definitely a chance, and if Wooden's not on on. on on the mark, then that's most definitely. We've seen um, Woodend at times can drop off a little bit, but it's about being consistent for that four quarters, and they'll be looking for that second straight win. Shaping up to be an interesting uh, round this uh, this weekend, at least the first part. So if, uh, hopefully we get a good uh, good first part of this round, and the second one will be a, a, gr- a great finish uh, as we head towards finals. Not too far away, we've got the junior finals that uh, scheduled to kick off in just a couple of weeks' time. So plenty of great excitement there. Tara, thanks so much for joining us this week on the Netball Show. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for having me.